Hey guys, this is Andre with How Real Life Works. Welcome to our new video. In this one, we're going to introduce to you the role of a Foley artist. We got to talk to Richard Hinton. Richard is a famous, perfect Foley artist that has worked on some of the great documentary movies like Frozen Planet, Our Planet, and The Hunt. And he will explain to you what exactly is Foley, why it's important for the movies, and he will also tell you the difference between Foley for TV, cinema, and animation. Welcome to our channel where we talk about all the stuff that school doesn't teach you. To start, Richard, could you explain to us um, what's Foley and what do you actually do in a day as a Foley artist? Yeah, sure thing. So Foley is the process of performing sounds to picture. So my job is essentially to fill in the missing holes of a soundtrack. So if you're on a drama set, for example, or if you're doing a natural history documentary, or animation is quite a good example, because obviously animation, you start with no sound at all because you're drawing the pictures or creating the pictures. So it's my job then to perform in real time the movement of a piece of film, essentially. So you run the piece of film in real time and whatever's happening on screen, I will recreate. So we'll mic up my feet. I'll do all the footsteps. We'll mic up my clothing. We'll do clothing movements. If somebody's picking up a glass of water and drinking it. I'll pick up a glass of water and drink it. So basically, this is all the sound that's missing from a soundtrack and sometimes sound that's there, but we can improve on. So essentially, I'm building a soundtrack from performance. What's the core, do you think it's fully, like, why is it important in the process of film production? Well, it's, rather than using library sounds all the time, which can be quite dry and unspecific, um, what it brings is a sense of poetry and movement to a soundtrack. Because it's more flowing, it's a performance. So it adds a touch of realism, you know, and also it, it, it's very cost efficient. So production, like it for that, that reason, you know, we can punch, you know, we can fill a soundtrack very, very quickly compared to how long it would take an editor to individually play stuff. So um, we can bring a certain amount of emotion to a performance as well, because it is a performance. We can, we can analyze a character and we can reinforce a character's traits, you know, it, certainly in case of a drama or a movie, you know, we can heighten certain elements of the soundtrack by really focusing. For example, I did a, a crime drama a few years ago that was set in Paris, and it was a murder drama, a period murder drama, set, um, sort of in the 1930s, um, very stylized. The murderer wore a very specific pair of shoes, and production were really keen to have a signature sound for that. So if you can make your shoe sound menacing, that's what we tried to do. We tried to make that shoe very defined, very confident, and we gave it a certain leather creak to it as a, as a signature move. And it was a very specific sort of sound. So that's something that you can really do with Foley. You can really focus in on small aspects of the soundtrack that would be very, very difficult to do otherwise, or certainly very time consuming. Right, that's something you cannot find in a library for sure. Um, and I thought, I don't know if it's a good example, but it's almost like you're watching the movies back in the days where they have canned laughters, like the TV shows versus like if you're alive and then you're hearing everything, that's the kind of almost like the difference, right? It's yeah, very gives... much so, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean that, that's, that's the idea. I mean, good Foley, you shouldn't really notice when you're watching something because right. it, should, it should just fit. It should bed in. It should feel natural. I mean, even something that's quite a heightened thing, like the shoe example that I just gave, if you do it correctly, it marries so perfectly with the visual that you're watching that your brain just believes it and that's kind of the aim of what we're going for when we do a performance so is there any difference when you do foley between tv movie animation um you know like different genres of movie production sure um absolutely i mean tv stuff um i mean a lot of it's down to budget you know usually feature film stuff is usually bigger budget although Budgets, certainly with the uh, subscription services like Netflix, Apple TV, etc. Budgets are really, really good. So they, um, um, and also they're delivering in Dolby Atmos a lot of the time. So you have to think about that. That's a real 
that's probably one of the newest things that has impacted our job a lot because you have to think about how sound is used more. I mean, we've thought about 5.1 for a long time with stuff happening behind you, but now we have to think about things that are moving overhead as well. So if you have a bird, for example, on screen that flies off the top of the screen, you now have to continue that sound so the mixer can then pan it right over the listener's heads and off to the back. So stuff for Netflix and cinema, we always have to do in Dolby Atmos now because that's like a standard delivery. The biggest thing between working for television and cinema is the physical size of the final viewed product. So television, even with people's big televisions, you're still thinking quite small. But with cinema, cinema screen's huge. So if, for example, you have a close-up of a big cat walking, you've got a close-up of the feet, and the feet pan across the cinema screen. By the time the front feet are over here, the back feet are just coming onto the screen here. There's like 32 feet between them. So you have to be able to pan those feet individually. So when we're working cinema, we'll always do the front feet separate from the back feet so that the mixer has the ability to separate them and pan the front feet differently from the back feet, if you understand what I mean. So you can separate those two feet and place them in different places on the screen. With television, because it's a smaller environment, that's less necessary. You can't, your brain is quite happy with the feet being panned as, a, as an item, as a solid single thing. Although televisions are getting bigger and bigger as well, so we are beginning to have to address that as well. So more and more with shots like that, we are having to start thinking, well, okay, my television's only like 42 inches, but somebody's bound to have an 82-inch TV at home somewhere. We're going to have to start thinking about splitting these feet. That's kind of the biggest difference between the two. You have to think about sign placement a lot more with the cinema production because you have to be able to place things a lot more accurately just sheerly by the sheer size of the, the final projection screen. Well, what about say, for a scene of a man walking on a wooden floor. Yeah. For that scene in an animation versus for that scene in the real life, would you use the same sound or would you use a different sound for, for the exact same movement, basically? A lot of it would be down, on the, down to the animation. If it's quite a serious animation, you know, as it's... Um, yeah, it'd be a lot. It's, it's all down to style. At the end of the day, is it a Hanna Barbera wacky kind of cartoon? Is it a manga? Is it you know? Because if it's more over the top, funny, humorous thing, we would probably go more exaggerated with the feet. We'd probably big up the creek. Um, so yeah, a lot of it would be this down to the style of the animation. So if it's if it's very straight animation, we would probably do it very similar. If it was a more wacky, over-the-top, cartoony type thing, we'd exaggerate a lot more because the, the images would allow that. The more outrageous the images, the more we can exaggerate the sound and the more exaggerated sound we get away with using because it matches the picture more closely. So, sure, you can get away with doing a very muted wooden footstep, but if it's some kind of crazy thing that's happening, you kind of want to big up that action to match what's going on screen. That was the introduction to Foley by Richard. If you are a high school student or a young person in general and you're interested in creating content, you can join our team. There's a link below in the YouTube description that leads to a form that you can fill up and you can let us know that you're actually interested in learning everything about content creation. In the meantime, if you like what we're doing, please make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell and I will see you in some other video. Bye-bye.